Welcome to Queen Anne's County Board of Education Work Session for February 23rd, 2022. Uh, motion going to close session. Uh, yes, sir. Pursuant to the General Provisions Act, Sections 3 305 and 104, Board of Education uh, will meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this body has jurisdiction and any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. All those favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it, we'll be back at regular uh, thing at five o'clock, thank you. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education work session for February 23rd, 2022. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, do we have approval of the agenda for this evening? I moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye, aye. Aye. Okay, approval of minutes for February the 2nd closed session. Everybody had a chance to look at those? Yep. Do I have a motion? Yep. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. <laughs> okay. Approval of minutes for February 2nd open session. Everybody had a chance to look at those? Yes. Motion. So moved. Second. 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 Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Have it. Approval of minutes for February the 9th budget work session. Everybody had a chance to look at those? Yes. Uh, move for approval of the minutes, February 9th, 2022, budget work session. Second. Motion, motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. And our final one would be uh, approval of the February 9th closed session. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Okay. Our next thing will be an informational item. Uh, Dr. Salmons, could you give us an update on COVID-19? Yes, um, I'd like to focus on um, the mask mandate and kind of just review with the board just uh, the timeline. Um, I'm sure as most of you can recall in September, um, the State Board of Education um, during one of their meetings recommended um, to institute a, a mask mandate through the state of Maryland. Um, and that recommendation went to the AELR. That is a legislative body of about 15 legislators who come together for purposes of passing emergency regulations or laws. And so that, that um, committee had a hearing, got together, and they ultimately um, voted and determined that there would be a mask mandate in place um, for a given period of time through the state of Maryland. Um, they met again subsequently following that to extend that um, through the remainder of the, of the school year. And then most recently, the state board this um, past week um, got together and listened to quite a bit of comments um, from the community and made a recommendation back to the AELR um, to resend the mask mandate and make that back to a local decision um, for each jurisdiction to look at their own data to determine. And so that would create the local opportunity to make masking a choice. Um, so Friday, the AELR will get together at 2.30 on Friday afternoon. They will take a vote to determine whether they will be accepting that recommendation. The exact recommendation is, again, to resend the mask mandate to throw that back to the local authority as of March 1st. So I just want to update the board on that, see if they had any questions. We have um, prepared communications already for um, hopefully when and if we do get that local authority back that we will um, make that a choice for students and for parents. Um, and for that matter, anyone who enters um, one of our buildings. So it wouldn't just take effect into our schools. That would be across um, Queen Anne's County Public Schools as a whole in any building. So we're prepared to do that and just kind of waiting for um, that news to be released. Um, I do anticipate, honestly, that they will move that direction and that that will be, um, again, as of March 1st, would give us the opportunity to have that uh, personal choice. So that is um, just my update for the board, and I will certainly 
um, if anybody has any questions. That question, so what we're saying is we're, we're thinking that if they do that, then we're saying that we're going to make it optional as of March 1st and we'll be ready to, all of our stuff be ready to shoot it out there to- Yes, to the exactly. Room. Wonderful. Yep. I, and, I, and I, you know, I know this board's frustrated because I've talked to individuals and, and I probably on a daily basis with Dr. Salins. You know, we've been masked, what, two months ago, we were getting numbers on a daily basis from the state on right. where our numbers were. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's a breach in this computer and we haven't gotten these numbers. And my understanding, and I'm not gonna, that I've talked to some people and the, the thing I, interesting thing I found out was we're, we're in our state numbers. Our state numbers are okay. Then all of a sudden they went to the CDC numbers. It's very frustrating when they changed the playing field at the end mm -hmm. when this could have been done probably a week or two ago in Queen Anne's County. Well, um, I would not be opposed of them say, of us saying we've hit that off ramp and have them have to show that we did not hit that off ramp. I, I, I agree with that, but the one thing is, and I've talked to a couple of people, and I'm not gonna throw, mention them because it's one of them's been our lawyer. Um, there's Comor regulations and it looks like Friday if everything goes like it should, we can the mask will be lifted in Queen Anne's County. I want to make it clear, it will be in our school, if it happens, it will be in our schools and in our offices. Federal law still takes place over school buses. That's exactly they right. They will still have to ride on the bus that to be masked. And I also say, for the people, which I'm sure we're going to get somebody says we should stay masked, everybody can wear a mask if they want to. Right. It's optional. Right. You can wear one, you can wear two. That's up to you how you want to do it. Um, but hopefully it will be voted on that and we can get back to, I mean, we've been this coming March two years with this and we know it's hurt our children with this COVID being out of school and everything else going on. And, um, you know, I think this could be a big turning point. Uh, and I think this whole board's on the same page. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. That, you know, ASAP as soon as we can get that done. Yep, we are ready to go. Anybody else? No, it's just, just right. It's overdue. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> yeah, you know, it was unfortunate that this even had to come down <clears throat> back in September when they went to the uh, AELR in the first place. Because my recollection is that we had 22 counties out of 24 that were going mask mandate anyway, like we did. That's correct. You know, there was only two. I think Carol was one of them, and I can't remember the other. Um, and it's unfortunate that they squandered that opportunity to have those uh, counties go. Uh, mask optional to see right. how it would work, right. you know, and, and do these masks really work in the classrooms and, and et cetera. So, um, you know, hopefully if in the future this never happens, but if it does, then, you know, the, the next board will consider that before they go full force on a statewide mandate. Um, I, I agree completely. And yeah. if you listen to the, you know, to the meeting, our state superintendent specifically said that the state had to step in because the locals weren't doing what they needed to do. And I disagree with that statement. Sure. There was two that were making that decision based on their community or whatnot. But, um, but I, I agree with you. It should always be local authority. Our districts are all different. Our metrics are different. And we should have the opportunity to assess what's going on in our community and meet the needs of our community. And so it is well overdue. And, um, um, and, and I completely support it. <clears throat> and as soon as we get the word, we will absolutely, we are geared up and ready to go Great. out of the gate. Great. So. And just so the board knows, it is on the agenda for next Wednesday, which is our regular board meeting in March. It should be a non-issue hopefully by then, right. but it is on our agenda okay. if we need to discuss it at that time. But uh, we, like, like Dr. Salem says, 2.30 on Friday, mm -hmm. hopefully it could be over with. Yeah. Any further discussion? Interesting timing for them on Friday, right? <laughs> yeah, well. Okay. I'll reserve comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> I said interesting timing. I, you know, I, I must say, I know the board's frustrated because they I've had comments. I've been frustrated and uh, like I guess Dr. Salins has been mm -hmm. frustrated. Um, but um, it can be passed us and we're gonna move forward. Uh, next thing is 402 capital and non-recurrent projects. <laughs> Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, Sid Pender, Chief Operating Officer. Carla Pullen, Facilities Planner. And we are here tonight to go over 
the uh, we're here tonight to go over the um, capital and non-reoccurring uh, projects. In, in the past year, um, I don't know, five or six years, you're gonna see a little bit of different format than what we've normally done. Um, you're looking tonight at the capital, which will be your true um, CIP, which is um, partial funding by the state, partial funding by the county. It's a 51-49 split. Um, that has been that way for a few years. They do go back every couple of years and reevaluate that to determine, um, you know, if they need to level that out some. You'll see other counties um, that have a, a higher share, um, but we've typically been for about 50-50. Um, but again, like I said, it's 49-51 right now. And what we're going to show you tonight, there's a lot of things that are changing. Um, you know, uh, the prices uh, of certain bids are coming in high. Um, the availability of product, the price of the product, labor um, have all escalated um, along with fuel. And some of the projects that we have put out there, um, we have to rebid, you know, obviously to see where they're coming in. We're still waiting. Carla was on a conference call today with the state, um, you know, waiting for them to say, hey, we're going to fully fund this or we're not going to fully fund that. Um, so what you see tonight, you know, may change in the upcoming years. Um, for FY uh, 23, that's going to stay, you know, consistent with what we have. Um, there are different pots of money that are becoming available. Um, we've always had the aging school fund, which is where a building that's uh, 15 years or older would get funding from the state um, to, to do repairs and things like that. And that's where we used to use our painting from, but then they cut that out and you cannot use it for painting anymore. So um, what we're trying to do tonight um, is align the budget. One of the things the county commissioners asked us years ago, could you kind of come to us with a, a consistent number year after year so that when we're budgeting this we don't have to go okay you want 20 million this year and then you want 5 million next year so we've kind of tried to position ourselves with that we did a facility assessment about uh, six seven years ago um, that really laid out our 20-year plan of what's the life cycle of the building um, major components of HVAC VCT um, you know the uh, building shell roof those types of things to kind of give us a ballpark so in the years past we would come here and say okay here's our facility assessment we're kind of budgeting for 1.2 million just to keep up our facilities all of that now and you've seen that in, the, in some presentations is now incorporated into the operating budget that we're proposing for this year so tonight what you'll see is is, is the truly the CIP um, one or two projects that are fully funded by the county um, and we'll go into that and if you've got any questions at the end please feel free to ask um, it's a pretty straightforward presentation so what we have, we have for the FY23 projects, we have the Bayside Elementary Security Vestibule, and that would cost 82,000 local. And then we've also have a, we applied for a grant for the um, Safe Schools, um, Safe Schools, Maryland Center, Center for Safety does a Safe Schools grant. We applied for that and we were awarded $56,000 to go along with that. Um, when you see the security vestibule, basically you go into Bayside Elementary School, you can go right, left, anywhere you want to go as soon as you get in there. So we're trying to, you know, have all of our schools consistent with a, you know, a single point entry when you come in there. Some of them are easier than others, just based upon, you know, how the building was laid out. The next one you'll see is Kent Island High School track resurfacing. Um, that track is about 24 years old. It has never been resurfaced. We were able to patch it in a few spots a few years ago. But if you recall, the county commissioners, when they installed the um, the turf in the stadiums, they were trying to resurface the tracks at the same time. Um, funding just was not available at the end of that project. So resurfacing the track would be a county funded also project. The next item that we're showing is the construction portion for the new central office building. This is a $14 million ask. That's what we're anticipating. That's over a two year budget cycle. The following item, Queen Anne's County High School, the roof replacement. This is the county share of a $9.1 million ask between the state and the county. 
as Mr. Pender alluded to, there is grossly overinflated numbers that we're getting right now due to schedule, due to building material, due to lack of um, materials and, and getting them to the location. Um, at one point, we had thought that the state was going to forgo this ask. In fact, they told us as much. And as they've gone through the evolution of their budget, it now looks like they will be fully funding this $4.9 million amount to us, so or $4.1 million amount to the state. So we would be asking the county for 4.9 of that. This is a complete replacement, right? This was not a problem. Yes, this is a complete replacement. This will also help us to solve some issues with some parapet walls that are around that roofing section that is desperately needed. And then we have another security vestibule project. I'm sorry. Just to, to tag onto that. Yep. Ken Island High School is being run. Their, their building has a roof thing. And last year it was 2.4 million from the county. So if I take just 50, 50, that's 4.8. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking we've been told eight, nine million like this one. What's going on with that project? And it's, I know it's not in this capital as in a previous one, but is the county and the state gonna take care of that too? Well, at this point, we have $4 million allotted for the Ken Island High School roof. That will be bid in- Four for the county. No, that's overall total. So it's about 2.1 from the county, and I think it's 2.3 or 4 from the state. Okay. That so was that was partial, anticipated right? to be a $4 million project when that was initially requested. Right. Since COVID has happened, we're looking at potentially an $8 million bid result for that roofing project. Trouble. That is anticipated to happen in the April timeframe. We're going to see what happens when those bids come in, and that's part of the discussion we're having with the state right now. What does that look like if those bids do come in that high, what type of additional aid the state is able to do, and where we go from there. But if the state says they will go like this one up, and I'm, I'm talking last year's capital. Yes. Is the county aware that we might be asking for an additional couple million dollars just to well, is it on our radar I, screen? I think, I think we're going to look at some additional options before we do that. So in the conversations with the state, there is a new fund, fairly recent fund called the Healthy School Fund okay. that at one point was established to help with the HVAC projects around the state and some of those that weren't necessarily happening as they would. The state has gotten much more money in that fund. So now they're looking at 90 million. Half of that is allotted to one of the county school systems. Um, the rest of that, the 45 million, then goes into allotments for all of the other counties. They're prioritizing roof projects in this healthy school fund now. So there is some discussion that potentially, if the bids do not go our way, we could rescind that project from our CIP ask apply in the healthy school fund and, and, and potentially get all $8 million when would for that. Get, I'm, okay. sorry. I'm sorry, go When ahead. would you get that information? You... We'll start to have that information as soon as the bids come in. So we know in the April, May time frame, oh, okay. that's when we're going to be having those conversations with the state and before our budgets are so solidified. Good, you know, um, uh, we push a lot of projects back. A uh, roof is something that concerns me greatly because either pay me now or pay me later. And if you don't pay me now, it's going to be a lot later. That's yep. exactly right. And that's just... You know, I know it's not in this budget, but it's just, you know, we've heard that. And I, so there is a plan, hopefully, to get the state to do that. And then we would, and that's a two year project, Mr. Pender, or over like what we do during the summer yes. of this year and then summer of next year. And just also keep in mind, like when these projects become funded, it typically starts the following year because we're not going to get funding until July 1st. Well, there's no possible way that we can do it. So some of these ones that you're seeing, it'll be, you know, next next summer okay. being, you know, uh, performed. This on the, are, is, will there be some overlap then? Will they still be on QAC? Um, and see Ken Island when they start work on the Queen Anne's County? Is there an overlap? Potentially, potentially. And some of that we want to leave up to the contractor. We don't want to back them into a corner on schedule. We want to leave some flexibility so that they're able to determine how and when they can get that done. So yes, if they're able to do it over one summer, we would gladly accept that. If we need to push it to two, then there's likely to be some overlap. 
Okay, I'd like to make one thing. My understanding is we just went off, we're supposed to be on live stream for this budget hearing and we just went offline. We had a problem, we're back on now, Jeff. If, um, can you just throw your hands up wildly to me and we will stop this meeting by law if it's not live streamed. Okay. okay. We're on Facebook as well and on uh, uh, cable account. I will. I'll make that decision, but just make sure if you find out we're go not going live, you get a hold of somebody up here. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. And then the the last item on there is the Ken Allen High School security vestibule, and that is ninety three thousand local. And then we were also able to secure a Maryland Center for School Safety grant for ninety three thousand to to match that. Now, Queen Anne's is not on there. It's funded for this year. This year, okay. Yeah, that was okay. Uh, Sorry. Kennard and Queen Anne's County High School. Gotcha. Um, Ken Allen, is, it's gonna, that's going to be a challenging one also because when you walk in, Mm. <laughs> <Those ways. laughs> yeah. um, for FY24 capital projects, um, again, these are future projects. Uh, the first one, the Kennard Elementary School fire alarm replacement, um, 309,000, um, you know, would be the local share. We're also looking in the past, if you, we've replaced Graysonville Elementaries, um, Ken Island High School, um, I'm missing one. Or Churchill Elementary, Churchill Elementary School. So they've met their life cycle, truly, and we've got our money out of them, and it's time to replace them. They're a life safety um, option. So we're, we're focusing on that at that particular time. Um, you'll see this year um, for FY24, the Queen Anne's County High School track resurfacing. Again, that was supposed to be incorporated into the um, stadium when they did the turf. Um, the funding wasn't there. That would be supplied by the county for that price, $330,000. For fiscal year 24, we anticipate that we would have the second round of funding, $7 million for the construction of the new central office building. And we also anticipate that we will be asking for planning and design funding from both the state and the county. We show here a $5 million cost. Piece of good news is that the state is now participating in design costs as well as furniture and FF&E. So 10% of the project cost is what we could allot to design fees. We would then pay 50% of that. So we would be asking 50% of that from the state and 50% of that in the county in our CIP process. Um, but that's good news because that hasn't happened for a very, very, very long time. And that, of course, on a building of that size would be a, a huge amount. Fiscal year 25, we're looking at the construction funding for the renovation or the replacement of Centerville Middle School. We have 9.5 million shown for fiscal year 25, but we again expect that we're gonna use a combination of funding for this particular project. So there is built to learn funding that is a recent addition from the state. We're currently allotted $8 million in that pot of money. And then we would uh, combine that with traditional CIP funding. So as we normally go in and October with our asks, we would be looking at how we could utilize both of these funding sources together. You guys had had the central, the planning and design amount at 5 million and said that it was about 5 million and that's about 10% of? Yes, so we're, we're anticipating a 10, a 50 million. We're close mm -hmm. at this For point. For the middle we're school? Mm -hmm. 50 million dollars? Oh, yeah, easy, yeah, <laughs> actually, yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And if, if you look at, we've tried to keep it within range, you know, 12 million each year, 12, close to 13 million. But with capital, you're never going to have it exact the whole time because you may be constructing a new building and, you know, that's going to jump it way up. So we're, we're trying to keep it steady. But again, you're going to see some years where it does fluctuate with that. Um, for FY25, the other capital project would be, of course, the uh, replacement of the fire alarm system at uh, Queen Anne's County High School, uh, $441,000. And then fiscal year 26, this would be remaining funding for that construction for Centerville Middle School. Again, that total may look a little bit different once we have the different pots of money and we figure out exactly what part we'll be funding it. And it says Centerville Middle School building renovations. We're talking either new building probably or or a complete renovation. Option, 
yes. we're not we're not committed on renovations right now. No, that's we are not. Something to be decided in the future. Correct. The feasibility study mm -hmm. will give us that information. Mm -hmm. But now you've only got okay. I'm just trying to work these numbers. So the five million for the planning and design, which is about ten percent, so it's fifty million. Are you doing an FY27 for more? Because that was even if we do the half and half, it's we're only forty at forty million now, right? Oh. With those two years with CMS. It's it's possible, and again, that will look at how much more money we're allotted in future years, which we don't know yet from the Built to Learn Act. We're hoping that we will see over eight million, and in future years, we should definitely see more of that. We also anticipate that our uh, capital request number could be we could get an allotment a little more than that as well. I tell you, the, the Build to Learn Act is something totally different that includes the Maryland Stadium Authority. And it's a whole different process than the traditional, you know, CIP. Um, it's Carla's constantly coming in the office. Hey, this changed today. That changed, you know. And it's like, how do you truly put a, a number on it right now? I mean, it's I've never seen it like this before. It's very, very tough. Um, our last slide is um, what we refer to as non-recurring projects. Um, and basically uh, what we're looking at is what kind of initiative is associated with it? Um, are we starting you know, something new? Um, can we improve on some kind of safety aspect of it? Um, really, FY23, um, Queen Anne's County High School paving and mill milling, um, we really want to get if you've pulled up to Queen Anne's County High School during arrival or dismissal time, it, it is, uh, and Ms. Huda can attest to this, um, and I sit in it every day, I drop my daughter off. Um, we really need to do some um, relining and we need to do some direction control, some drainage um, to make it a more safer environment when you drop them off. Um, plus, um, that's the, uh, the drainage there is, is it's bad. Um, we're looking, and again, if you look at our uh, facility assessment, this is another item where we've been trying to mill and overlay. Um, we did Churchill Elementary School, we did Sellersville Elementary School. Um, you know, next on our list, we have, uh, a, of course, Queen Anne's County High School, but also Ken Island High School. And, you know, we looked at a few different options of what is the best route to go. Can we do another access road? That would take forever to get approval by the State Highway Administration after you do traffic three studies. Or four. That's a state highway. Yeah. Um, and then where you're looking at that is right next to ACME. They've really frowned upon in the past of putting other, you know, entrances and exits to that intersection there. So th this will be a great time to, you know, do those safety uh, enhancements and then also, you know, do the milling and overlay, which is <laughs> desperately needed there. Um, I can't tell you the last time besides Sellersville Elementary School and Churchill prior to that, and unless it was a brand new school, that was the only time we've had blacktop um, installed. Um, it's just been patched job, patch job, and you can only do that for so long. Um, so really what we've tried to focus is kind of keep the numbers consistent um, through those next few years, um, around $550,000 of our ask. Like I said, we try to keep it in one constant uh, time and uh, amount. Uh, Universal Pre-K will be coming up, you know, getting that furniture allotted for the classroom um, for, for Pre-K. And then FY24 also, playground equipment has about a life expectancy of about 20 years. Um, Parks and Rec has a certified inspector that uh, comes through and inspects our equipment every year. It, it, these, our schools are coming to an end of the life expectancy of the playground equipment. Um, it's a major liability issue. You, you truly can't get the parts to replace uh, the ones that are broken on them. But I, I will say this, Playground equipment is not a cheap, um, mm -hmm. it's not a cheap route. It's a, it's a very expensive route, but you also have to make sure that when you're making these changes, it's ADA compliant um, for all students to have the access to it. Um, so if you look at FY24, that would be about 550,000. Um, the next year would be Ken Island Elementary School uh, replacement for playground equipment for uh, 350,000. And then again, universal pre-K. Um, classroom furniture for a total of 550,000. Um, we could go out more years up, you know, in advance of that, but 
you'll be seeing playground equipment coming back and coming back and coming back because it's another one of those items where it always gets cut and we're past the point of you know getting cut it's you know we got to do something now to maintain or at one time you're going to have several million dollars requested for replacing it all at one time so we're trying to spread that out over time any questions any questions by the comments thank you one thing I'd, I'd like to note to the public is that you know some of this has changed because our chromebooks and our painting now is in a different category. Yes, sir. This used to be, it's not something we're not putting in, but it has to be going in our operating budget. That's correct. Due to uh, accounting uh, <laughs> regulations that we've been audited with. Mm -hmm. So some things you don't see in here that if you ask us about, it's not, it's just going in a different, I think it's 15 or something, category, category 15. 15 in our budget that you can find out where that's going to be. Um, and that was something that was yeah, beyond our control. We've explained it to the commissioners. The commissioners understand. Uh, I think we didn't do a lot this year because it was a, it was a, it was a transition year. But it is something that we're on, yep. but it's not in this budget as some of us are used to seeing it every, you know. And it's important to keep it on that cycle so we yeah. can keep those buildings going on. Oh, well, it's, it's like painting and stuff. I mean, you know, it. it, it I was a doctor something and Mr. Pender in Cunard and you know that school is opened you know with doors flying you know every day it's 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 like being in a mall you know what I mean it's not it's not like your house right. so they they take a lot of wear and tear oh. and uh even the thing they showed us about the gymnasium which was not done properly 10 or 20 years ago it's always something you know it's always it never something. stops it's not like a traditional house where you got four people going in and out no. maybe two to three times no. a day you know I will say, if you get a chance, um, stop by Queens County High School. There's the new cafeteria tables in there. Okay. It has made a tremendous difference in just the kids' attitudes, the staff's attitudes. Um, you no longer have the tables that have been there for 30, 40 years that you can't get up and down. Um, our custodian staff is very excited because the chair, the stool is actually attached to it. So instead of removing 400 chairs every single day, um, you know, and the poor custodian that's in charge of it, uh, she's actually retiring this year. <laughs> so she's, she's not going to get, uh, you know, be able to fully appreciate that. But um, it's, a, it's a move in the right direction. It's really added a big difference to that, that cafeteria. So. And thank you. Have any other? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Our next thing would be our future board meetings. Next Wednesday, we will have our regular scheduled board meeting. Um, are we see, I know we have work sessions in the middle of the month. Do we have a budget, extra budget work session scheduled at all? We have March 2nd as our regular meeting. Right. And then we have March 9th. Which is, is budget. our budget. Yep, okay. is our budget. Um, and to, then the 16th could be our work session. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. Do you have any other questions or things for the calls? Uh, were, we, were we going to talk at all about the clay target? Were we doing that another time? I mean, I don't have it on the thing. Would if you want to bring something I up? I put it out there for us to, you know, just because I know that Sean. I mean, we we. That. We talked about it. It's it's at ten. I think they've started, Mr. Pender. They've in their process. It's one it's right now. Currently, it's it's ten uh, members on one team. Um, that combination of Queen Anne's and um, Ken Island High School is currently what it has for this for the spring. For the spring, yes, sir. And then there'll be a fall one in the fall that can be looked at again. Well, Sid, how would you feel about, because I know Sean asked that he said he had 32 people signed up. What if we split the difference and made it 16? That's still, he has enough coaches for, he for like, he said he had enough coaches for all of them, but I know we don't want to stress it with it being the pilot program. What if we, you know, did a little bit? And then we would be in a good position for the next semester to maybe even be more competitive because we'd have some experience under about, how would you feel about that if we did the 16? <laughs> Something we'd have, I'd have to take a look at. I mean, he did, he, he did send us an email. I just, yeah, you know, no, I, I need yeah, to take. I, I mean, I feel like it's a pilot. Let us get out. Let us kind of figure it out right now. Um, and and well, I feel confident that we're going to be able to do that, and then we can open it up the following year. 
um, like we had discussed before. But it is a pilot program. It's certainly something that no one else has really taken on the challenge through the state of Maryland. I think that we should really be cautious and careful to make sure that we cross every T, dot every I, and that um, we, you know, make sure that we take every precautionary step that we do this right the first time so we get it right so that we can duplicate the process. So I, I, I would, you know, respectfully ask that we let's stick to our plan that we uh, this, had this for this spring and then we can move forward from there. My only thing with it was is the first time we brought it up, we approved it, and I'm sorry, this is before you, Dr. Salins, mm -hmm. um, is that we did not limit it to 10. So I'm not sure how we even got it to the 10, but we didn't limit it to the 10. And I know that, um, such an opportunity for uh, scholarships and it's so inclusive so I mean it's the only sport that we have and if he's got the um, coaches for it we're only talking eight people from each stool eight students from Queen Anne's County eight students from Kent Island um, and you know it's the only I know it's a pilot I know we're the first ones in Maryland which I'm very excited about that but it's the only sport ever that's never had an injury I mean I think you know we're I think it is um, that we have dotted our I's and, and crossed our T's. I just think, I just feel bad for them because we, these students have been waiting two years for this. Well, I'm, um, my view is I'm happy we have it. I think it's a good, will be a good program. Um, 10 was a number, was, I mean, I know we talked about other things at one time. It was recommended. Not for safety, but you know it's a it's a new sport. You have when, once you go farther down with this thing, it would be, it'd be it'd be good to go deeper next year maybe. But I I'm a firm believer that I have no problem in taking the recommendations that we got to stay at ten this year. And you know there are other programs, I guess, skeet shooting groups in the county, not in the school, that could shoot other places if they had to. But I would I'd say we stay where we are right now for that discussion. But the. The reason 10 came up, that's the number that is associated with one coach. So it's, it's 10 students per coach. Right. That's and where that had, came from. Right. I think he had four coaches. Shannon, do you have any comment or your mark? No, just that we did talk about this in open session, and uh, and I'm comfortable with, with uh, Sid's recommendation from before, even though we had voted on it with 20, just because of the nature of the program that uh, – you know, little by little, we'll, we'll get there, and it'll be open up to more people. So, I'm, I'm fine with 10. Okay. Any further discussion? <clears throat> 25 of 6. Anybody else got anything better to do? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> right, we have That's a motion to, to, motion to retire. Motion, uh, yes. Yeah, so I have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So I have it. We'll see you next uh, Wednesday. Yes.